Hi, I'm Eloisa Finchingfield, and welcome to my Weave Along series. Each episode, I'm going to be teaching you a different pattern in history and teaching you different techniques of tablet weaving. I'm going to start with some of the easy ones, and then as you progress through the series, you'll be building on your skills. Uh, we will start with a pretty easy one, I think, from the Osberg dig. I will be giving you step-by-step -step instructions so that you can weave it on your own loom and uh, hopefully avoid some of the disasters that I have experienced. I'm going to make sure to give you really explicit instructions if I can. And we'll also be doing a little bit of history of each of the pieces, where it came from, the origin, and the date for those things, as well as the pattern. Okay, so now let's look at the pattern we're going to use. I've chosen this one. Just kidding, this one is much too complex. I've chosen this one. This will probably look a lot easier to you, but still confusing because you don't know what any of this means. So let's look at the card again. You notice that the card has holes labeled A, B, C, and D. They're labeled in a clockwise rotation, and the rows here are labeled A, B, C, and D. Each of the holes in the card corresponds with the letters on the side of the chart here. You'll see also that they're numbered across. We'll need 10 cards for this particular project. One card, hole A, second card, hole A, and so on. Down below, you'll see they're labeled S and Z. Now that has to do with the threading of the cards. Let's talk about S and Z threading. This is going to be very important for getting your pattern to come out correctly. Now this diagram here shows you how the threads will go through the cards. The threads come from the back. They are threaded through the holes to the front. They come through the right side and go out the left. For S threading, the threads will be threaded through the left side and out through the right. Let me show you an example. If you are sitting at your loom, this will be your view. This is an S threaded card. The threads come in through this side and go out through that side. If you had a Z threaded card, the threads come in the opposite side and go out that way. Does that make sense? Let's look at the diagram again. This is a Z threaded card. Note how the threads come in the right side and go out the left side. If it was an S threaded card, it would come in the left side and come out the right side. Today, I'm going to be using the Maysville Carpet Warp. These are the colors I'm going to be using, and we'll begin warping them up in just a moment. Okay, the first card, I've got my cards here, my first card are all blue. So A, B, C, and D all have blue in, the, in all four holes. So I leave about a four inch tail and start at the starting point, going around all the pegs that I'm going to use. I'm gonna do a slightly shorter weave. I'm not gonna go the whole thing and around my tensioning bar. Notice my tensioning bar is all the way forward at the, the farthest point. I will leave it there and leave another four inch tail and snip it off. Go around the same pegs in the same order, around the tensioning bar, that's the beginning, and leave a tail. My third thread, Notice I have all the threads under my thumb. This maintains the tension, keeps them from falling off all of the pegs. And it doesn't matter if you go on top of each other a little bit. Start the beginning and snip it. So now we have all four threads for the first card on the loom. Let's scoot them in a little bit. And now we need to thread them through the first card. So now we're ready to thread the first card. The card's label, like I said before, it needs to be facing to the right. And the first card, all four are blue, and they're S threaded, which means we need to thread through the left side of the card and out through the right. In this case, we would say the back of the card. So what I usually do is I th hold the thread on the back of the card and carefully pick the threads out one at a time through each of the holes. 
Now, if you're using different colors, you need to be sure to pull the right color through the right hole of the card. And the last one. There we go. We have all four threads going through the holes through the back of the card. Now I tie these off. I use a surgeon's knot where you go over twice, pull it tight, and like a square knot, finish the card off. Now that card is tied off. It's not going anywhere, and I can push it back into position on the loom, get ready for the second card. Okay, now we're ready to do card number two. Card number two is all green, so we're switching to the green threads. Nice sounders colors, blue and green. Ooh, whoop. Gotta follow the same path as before. Now this loom, I'll tell you a little bit about this loom. I got this at an event about 20 years ago. I was only doing ink weaving at the time, and I made probably four or five projects on it before I started doing tablet weaving. I took a class and I, by the time I got home I had forgotten how to do it. So I took the class again a few months later and by the time I got home I would forgotten how to do it again. So I took a third class, kind of private really, it was just me and a friend sitting around. She showed me an easy pattern. I finally understood it. it took me that long. So if you don't get this the first time, don't worry. There's a lot of people who don't get it the first time or the second time sometimes even the third time all right we've got all four threads for card number two ready to go this is a z threaded card so we're facing the card the same direction but instead of going through the back of the card we're going to go through the front of the card and do it the same kind of way hold the thread by the correct hole tease it through And carefully pick up both ends and a surgeon's knot twice around left over right and then right over left just like you learned in scouts then push all the threads back on the loom and you're ready for card number three Okay, I went ahead and warped up card number three because it was the same technique as one and two, so you really didn't need to see me do that again. So the next card, card number four, has two different colors in it. So I'm going to show you what I do when I warp up two different colors at one time. Okay, so we're going to use two different colors. So what I sometimes do is I'll grab the two colors at the same time, saving myself a lot of time by warping both of them at once. I try to keep them separated so they don't tangle or twist, which will be important later. And get back up to the beginning again. Make sure you've got a tail at the beginning and at the end. And snip. So now we're going to do the other two purple threads separately. Okay. <laughs> Man, it's getting hot in here. It'll take off all your clothes. Snip. <laughs> so now we're going to S thread again. Checking out our diagram. We need to go in through the back of the card. Now the C hole has the yellow, so I usually do that first. I find the yellow, pull that through the correct hole. And then pull the other side. Verify. S threaded. Yes, yes. Surgeon's knot. And tie it off.
Okay, so the next thing you need to do is load your shuttle. Now, I picked up this one. It's a hardwood shuttle. It's really firm, doesn't bend. If you use something like a ruler, you're gonna see a little flex to it. Also, this metal edge on it can cut your threads. So while it could be used in a pinch, not ideal. Ooh, sorry, lamp. So I'm gonna load up my shuttle. First thing I do is I tie a knot in the end. Now this is just to anchor the thread to the shuttle so it doesn't slip off when you get near the end of the of your weft threads. All right, so we got it tied in a knot. We slip it over the end, snug it up, and then we're gonna wrap it in a gentle figure eight around the shuttle. This just helps keep the load of the thread on the top of the shuttle. The working edge will be this side. If we put it all through the middle, it'll end up being too fat. So I like to load it up on top. You can load it however you feel comfortable. Oop, missed. This is gonna get very boring, so let's speed this up. So that's probably enough to get started. So we're just going to snip this. Snip. And we can get started weaving now. Now that we've got it all warped up, we're just about ready to start weaving. Now the one thing you want to make sure is that the tension of all of your warp threads are consistent. You can check that by tipping this to the side. You can see all the warp threads. If you see one hanging down, you're going to want to fix that before you start. But all of mine are pretty springy, about the same amount of tension, so we're ready to roll. All the cards are turned so AD is on the top of the deck, and that's what the color coding is really great for. You can really see at a glance that all your cards are lined up in the right direction. So in the pattern, you can see that the background for some of these is white and other ones are gray. That indicates which direction you're turning the cards. Uh, turning the cards forwards means turning them away from you. Turning them backwards means turning them toward you. So the first 10 rows are all moving forward and the next 10 rows are all moving backward. Now this particular pattern, you can turn forward as many times as you want until the twist builds up too much in the warp threads and you, then it kind of forces you to go the other direction. So let's get started. We got our shuttle already loaded up, ready to go. And we're gonna take the tail of our weft thread and pull it through the shed. That's the open space between the upper threads and the lower threads. We're gonna turn the cards forwards. And then I like to anchor the thread the tail end of the thread by pulling it back through and putting the shuttle through the shed. So they're kind of crisscrossing in there. You don't want to pull them tight quite yet. We're going to turn the cards forwards again, put our shuttle through, pull it snug but not too tight. You see, you notice it does look pretty loose and sloppy there. Don't worry, it always looks like that in the first few passes. We're gonna turn the cards forward again. I'm gonna pass our shuttle through. Now I'm gonna beat it down just a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna give it a beat down. And then we'll snug it up a little. Remember, like I said, these first three passes are always gonna look terrible. Turn the cards again, beat, pass the shuttle through. Turn the cards, beat, pass the shuttle through. Oh, and I'm pulling the previous loop. So what I do is I pull it through, I leave a loop, turn the cards, press, and then pull, oops, pull the thread from the previous pass. So if you always leave a loop behind, it helps improve your tension.
beat, pull, leave a loop. Guess what, guys? We're weaving. Look at that. Now you can start seeing the pattern emerge. It has a, like a little S pattern. That's what this one is, the Osberg pattern. Oftentimes I put my fingers through there to open up the space. And I press down firmly. Now some patterns, it becomes much more important to press down even more firmly because it can compress the pattern to look more like the period patterns. Otherwise, they're really elongated and stretched out. This one, this compresses pretty well. Now you notice it leaves a nice little braided edge on your weave. And by leaving the loop behind, turning, and then pulling it, it'll make a more consistent salvage edge. Now here we go twist is built up too much up here. So what I sometimes do is I will just lift it and push it up beyond. So I have a little more space to weave and it's, the tension is released. And I think it's about time for us to move the other direction because the twist has built up enough, it's getting a little taut. So we can undo that twist just by changing directions. Now we're gonna go, let's see, I just threw the shuttle, so it's nestled in there. We're just gonna turn it backwards now for a while. Now you'll notice here, and I'll show you in another couple of passes, what happens when you change direction and it just is part of how it looks. You see it's got this weird little lump on the sides. That just, it just happens when you change directions. That's why these salvage edges, you want to have the cards going in the same direction for as long as possible before you change directions. Even if the inside bit is doing all kinds of different patterns, you always want the salvage cards to always be going in the same direction. It makes for a nice braided edge. When you've woven as far as you can and you've run out of space, it's time to advance the warp. So you'll need to loosen your tension bar, shift your warp down, and then move the tension bar back in place. Are you ready to weave again? Well, weavers, we've made it to the end of the warp. I have woven as far as I can. I can barely fit the shuttle through the shed, and there's only just a little bit of twisted up warp left on the other side of the cards. Now, I don't know if you've noticed this, but while this side has little Z's, the other side has boxes. This is a great two-sided weave. You can uh, put it either way you like on your garments or wear it as a belt. Both sides are decorative. It's pretty awesome. Now, some people like to very carefully untie all of those surgeon's knots. I mean, we tied them in a way that we can untie them, but uh, some of us just prefer the easy way.